forward my okay there you go so now we are ready um okay so what i wanted to do today was just jump in and take a practical application and see what kind of circuits can be built for that particular practical application okay so the application that i'm thinking about is ecg signal conditioning so uh if you have uh, i mean it, most people know what ecg is right ecg is a signal that is picked up from a human uh, person it's a, it's basically represents the activity of the human heart uh and if you have looked at movies you have these monitors where there's a trace going right it keeps saying beep 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 which basically indicates the uh, uh which indicates the um the beating of the heart and that's what we are doing uh, uh we are trying to record okay and uh, there was a man called einthoven who discovered how we can actually record the potentials of the heart and he basically what he did was he put two electrodes on his two hands and one other electrode in his leg and in fact the entire story is quite interesting because uh, instead of electrodes he is basically standing in uh what do you say buckets of salt water uh, which provide the electrodes for uh, in that case but in modern day uh, uh, uh scenarios in hospitals and all you don't use buckets of water but rather you just stick on a pair of electrodes i have a pair of electrodes here so these kind of electrodes so you can take one of these and you can stick it to your hand okay and another to this hand and one to your leg and you take these three electrodes and you and you put it through a circuit uh and we'll just talk about what that circuit looks like and the basic idea is that this uh this uh circuit would kind of amplify the ecg it will give you a signal that actually can be displayed outside and uh used okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to share my screen and let's scribble a little bit and try to figure out how ecg is recorded so let's give me a moment and let me share my screen here okay you should see me and the shared screen so that should be good okay so what i so if if i draw a person like this sorry about that so if i draw a person like this okay that's the extent of my drawing so here's a person and if you want to record ecg and this is right now we are not really in the circuits part of the uh, discussion right because we are still talking about how we are recording ecg once we get the ecg then we'll start building the build, building uh, a, a circuit now so you put one electrode in this hand you put one electrode on this hand and you put another electrode on the leg and you use these three electrodes to give you the sig uh, the ecg signal the the basic way that this works is that this electrode is the reference electrode you know whenever you're measuring voltages voltages are always measured with respect to something right so you are measuring the potentials of the body with respect to this electrode and this electrode is basically connected to the reference of your circuit as well so that the the reference at uh, from which the circuit is measuring the voltages and the reference that the body is uh, we are measuring the body potentials from both are the same okay so this will be connected to the reference of the circuit and then these two electrodes are the active electrodes and ecg is basically the signal that we get as a difference of these two uh, electrodes okay so 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 to record ecg what we want to do is we want to take the difference of the potential at this electrode and the potential at this electrode correct uh so we'll do that and let me just draw a very simple block here and say this is the block which takes the difference okay so let's write it as difference and we'll talk about what kind of block would do this difference and you give let's say this electrode connected there and this electrode let's connect it there and we connect the reference to here so let's call this ref 
let's call this v1 and v2. So at the output, you get v1 minus v2. Maybe there is a bit of a gain here. Okay, let's, let's leave the gain out for a moment because if, so you get V1 minus V2 and this signal, if, if you get a clean signal, uh, would look like, would look something like this. It, it's basically an ECG, right? And, and I'm sure you know that the ECG looks something like that. So you get this regular spikes uh, at uh, whenever your heart beats, okay? And the, 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 the signal that you get here is, has an amplitude probably of something around 10 millivolts, let's say, okay? So it could be a few millivolts, it could, be, it could go up to around 10 millivolts and the offset. So this baseline signal is not zero volts, but it would be somewhere around, let's say, 200 millivolts, maybe 100 millivolts, and it changes uh, depending on the person, depending on what kind of electrodes you're using and that kind of thing, okay? So now our purpose is to take this ECG signal, which has, which is a plus minus 10 millivolt signal plus a 200 millivolt offset. So you want to take this signal and you want to change it to a signal with, with probably let's say no offset, right? And an amplitude of let's say five volts, okay? Because that ECG is big enough and you can take it and display it on an oscilloscope or display it on a display and you can use that, okay? Now, if you want to make it a little bit more uh, interesting, you can say, well, what we can do is we'll say, that what we want to do is we want our Arduino to measure the ECG. So instead of no offset, all we'll say is we want our signal to span zero to five volt range approximately, okay? It should be between the zero to five volt range. Okay, so now the question is, how do we do this? Uh, okay, let's just step uh, back a moment and think through what we have done till now. So somebody did some research and told us how we can measure the ECG, okay? He told us that what we can, the way to measure the ECG is to use two electrodes on your hands and one electrode on your leg, connect this as a reference and take the difference of these two potentials and you will get an ECG signal here, okay? So that is not really circuit design, isn't it? That's kind of sensor design and somebody has done that sensor design. What we do is we take these potentials, we take a difference and we will build a circuit to do this. And we know that if we take a difference, we get a signal of this with, with a DC signal of 200 millivolts and an ECG of amplitude uh, plus minus 10 millivolts, okay? And what we want to do is we want to convert it into the zero to five volt range, okay? So how do we do that? That's your circuit design problem, okay? How, so what we are going to do is, as I always keep saying, if you have watched uh, my other videos, I've often told you that circuit design is all about uh, trying to pick up blocks from, you, you should have a bag or a box of circuit blocks, right? There are different shapes of circuit, circuits that do different things and you wanna pull them out and use them in your circuit. So, so now think through your uh, circuit blocks. Do you have a circuit that takes a difference of, of uh, two signals? Well, probably yes, right? You could, there are basic, the basic uh, circuit that does that is called a differential amplifier, okay? And you could try using a differential amplifier here, but the problem with a differential amplifier is it, won't, it will not really work and the reason why it doesn't work is because a differential amplifier has a very low input impedance, which means that it will draw a lot of current. And because it draws a lot of current, the voltage that you're measuring from the electrodes is basically going to die out. Die out. Okay, we, we can talk about input output impedances uh, some other day. An advanced version of the differential amplifier is an instrumentation amplifier. Instrumentation amplifier is an amplifier 
which has got buffers at the inputs. So it's basically a differential amplifier with buffers at the inputs. And well, there are a few more tricks about the instrumentation amplifier, but probably we'll save it for another day. Okay, so we are going to use an instrumentation amplifier to take this difference V1 minus V2. Okay, so, so let's draw the circuit in another slide. So let's use probably blue and we have an instrumentation amplifier here. The instrumentation amplifier has two inputs. So that's your, that goes to your electrodes. So let's write it as electrode one, electrode two. It's got a reference signal, VREF, which goes to your electrode, reference electrode, okay? Uh, it has got a gain amplif gain, but let's just set this. Let's just remove this resistor because we don't want a gain right now. Let's have a gain of one and leave it at that. Okay. Uh, we can put in a gain and we'll we'll talk about that in a moment. And then of course there will be power supplies for the instrumentation amplifier. And let's say we are using plus five volts and minus five volts. So at the output here you have your ECG signal, which is a 10 millivolt signal with a big DC offset, okay? Uh, perhaps what you can do is you can amplify the signal. You can amplify the signal, okay? So let's say you put an R and depending on which instrumentation amplifier you're using, the R would set the gain and the formulas for the gains would be different, okay? Now at the output, what do we have? So let's draw the ECG signal that we're getting here. So this is your baseline, this is your zero volts. And the ECG signal that you get is looking something like this. Okay. So you get something like that. And what, what we said before was that this offset is around 200 millivolts. And this amplitude is around 10 millivolts, right? Now, can we amplify this signal? What we want to do is we want to convert this 10 millivolt into approximately five volts, right? Now, but, but the problem is that your signal is not just 10 millivolts. So if it was just 10 millivolts, what you could have done is you could have just amplified it, right? Now, if you amplify the signal, what will happen? This gets amplified, this 10 millivolts, this gets amplified. But along with the 10 millivolts, we have this 200 millivolts also getting amplified, right? And because your supply is minus five and plus five, if, if you amplify it, let's say, let's say 50 times, okay? If you amplify it 50 times, this becomes 500 millivolts, right? So that's good. Uh, maybe you need a little bit more amplification, but what happens to this? If you do it 50 times, this becomes 10 volts. And your amplifiers are going to be saturated. So what we want to do is we want to put a small gain, okay? So let's say we put a gain of 10 because then this becomes two volts and this becomes 200 millivolts, okay? So we set a R so that the gain is two. So let me write that there, write that here. So I'll say we design our instrumentation amplifier so that we have a gain of, oh, well, we can have a gain of 10, isn't it? So with a gain of 10, what you will have is this becomes two volts, this becomes 100 millivolts, all right? Next, what do we want to do? We only want to amplify this signal. So what we what do we have to do? We have to take away this, this uh, 200 millivolts. Now, or at the output here, we have two volts. Maybe writing that down would help because then we'll remember it. So we have a two volt DC plus minus 200, no, not 200, 100 millivolts because we put a gain of 10. So 100 millivolts ECG, right? So we want to cut this two volt DC off. Now, how would you do that? Perhaps you're saying, oh, well, let's subtract the two volt DC out. Now that's a good idea, very good. That's the way I want you to think, right? Because if you subtract the two volt DC, then this goes away and you are only left with this 100 millivolt DC. But here's the problem with the subtraction, that this two volt DC doesn't remain two volts all the time, right? Depending on the person, depending on the electrode, depending on the time of the day, 
this offset can change, right? So you don't want to do subtraction. Now, if you don't want to do subtraction, what can you do? How can you remove this uh, two volt DC without, uh, without sub actually subtracting the two volt DC? Now think through this. What frequency is this two volt DC at? Well, the answer is this is a DC signal, right? A DC signal is just a constant signal. A constant signal has what frequency? A frequency of zero, right? So, so let me let, let me put this here. So we have a zero hertz signal here. And what is the frequency of the ECG? Okay, well, but the ECG is let's say around 60 beats per minute. That's what a heart beats, 60 beats per minute, which is 60 beats per 60 seconds, which means one beat per second, so around one hertz. One hertz is what uh, the frequency between this peak and this peak is, but then there are some changes which are faster here, right? So in all, you can say the ECG has a frequency content of, let's say, somewhere around 0 0.5 hertz to around 100 hertz, okay? So can do you know a circuit that cuts off this, uh, that cuts off this zero hertz and that keeps 0 0.5 hertz and above. Do you know of a circuit like that? Of course we do, right? That circuit is called a high pass filter, right? So if I, if I plot, if I plot a frequency spectrum here, and let's say this is frequency, that's a zero and that's 0 0.5, and if I put a filter like this, let's say, if I put a filter which has a gain of zero and then it has a gain of one here. So this filter is a high pass filter, right? So that's what I want at the output here. So I want a high pass filter. Now, what does a high pass filter do? Now, what, what will we get at the output of the high pass filter? Hopefully we will, completely cut off this two volt DC and we will only be remaining with a plus minus 100 millivolt ECG. So let me write that here. So we have a plus minus 100 millivolt ECG. All right, now what do we want to do? What was our aim? Our aim was to get the ECG to zero to five volts, right? So what can we do? Now we can make it a little bigger. We can amplify this plus minus 100 by how many times? We want to make it to five. We want to make the amplitude five volts. What's the amplitude of the signal at this point at the output of the high pass filter? It's plus minus 100. So it's around 200 millivolts in all. So it's from the zero line, it's 100 millivolts down, 100 millivolts up. So the total is 200 millivolts. We want it to go to a five uh, volts. Uh, Kind of signal. So maybe a gain of 25, right? So we put a gain of 25 after this. So we put a gain equal to 25. So if you do that, what would you get at the output here? You would get a signal which is plus minus 2.5 volts. Okay, let me Okay, you get a signal which is plus minus 2.5. Now, what you want is you don't want a minus 2.5. You want to have zero to five volts. So basically, how, how do you do that? So you have a signal which is going from minus 2.5 to my plus 2.5, and you want it to be shifted up to zero to five volts. So what do you do? What's the mathematical operation that does it? Right, you're right. You just add a 2.5 volts, right? So basically, I make a circuit, so let's say which sum, sums, so maybe a summing amplifier, that's what a block, a circuit block, there, uh, if you have done op amps, you know that there is a amplifier called the summing amplifier, and one of the inputs, we can give this ECG, and the other input, we can give a 2.5 volt signal. So at the output of this, you have a, a ECG, which is, zero to five volts ECG. Well, this is also an ECG, isn't it? So let's write that. Okay. 
So you have done all your processing uh, in, in, in this manner. Does that make sense? Okay, so you see what, 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 we, what did we do? We looked at the signal and said, okay, the signal is, uh, the signal that we are getting is 10 millivolts. We want to amplify it into five volts signal. But before we, amp if we amplify it, this DC offset is going to get amplified. So let's remove the DC offset and amplify the signal. And that's what we did. And once we amplified the signal, we said, okay, we need to shift it a bit so that it goes into the zero to five volt range. And that's what we have done here. Okay, so that's the way we uh, we look at uh, we look at our uh, uh, we build our circuit. Now, once you build your circuit, maybe at at some point, maybe at this point, or maybe at this point, you see that there's a lot of noise in your signal. You see that uh, the ECG doesn't look like this, but it's got this uh, small. It, it's got it, it's noisy like this. Okay, it seems to have the shape of the ECG, but at the same time, it seems to be noisy. And if you want to clear this signal up, then what do you do? You say, okay, this noise is is moving very fast. Your ECG is much slower than the noise, so I can cut it off. And you can do, what you can do is. You can put a low pass filter to cut that signal off. So you can do a low pass filter and you hopefully will get a much cleaner signal. The output. Okay, so, so let, let's kind of wind up and let me kind of, uh, what do you say, revise and explain what we did here. Okay, what we are doing is we have these blocks of circuit number. We have a high pass filter, low pass filter, a gain amplifier, a summing amplifier, we have an instrumentation amplifier. We have all these blocks in our bag or in our box of circuits. And we have this application called the ECG. We look at the signal and say, okay, here's the signal. Okay, this is our signal. Now, how do I want to change the signal? Right? And this is the critical thing in electronic design. Always think about how you are changing the signal. You need to think about what are you going to do to the signal and how you can implement what you want to do to the signal using one of the blocks in your bag of circuits. Okay, so you say, okay, what I want to do is I want to take this 200 millivolts, but this 200 millivolts is not a constant. So is there some other way I can distinguish between 200 millivolts and 10 millivolts? Ah, yes, frequency. So I use a high pass filter. Then I get this ECG signal. I said, hmm, I have 100 millivolts ECG. I want to convert it into a five volts peak to peak signal. How do I do that? Ah, okay. I can just amplify it by 25 times. Then I say, okay, I want to shift this and make put it into a zero to five volt range instead of a minus 2.5 to plus 2.5. How do I do that? Ah, I can sum a 2.5 volt signal. Okay, great. Once I get that, I see that there is noise in the signal. How do I remove that noise? Hmm, how do I distinguish the noise and the ECG? Well, I can again go to the frequency domain and therefore I get a low pass filter. Now, when you are operating with signals in that mind, you need to understand what signals do and what signals look like. And that's what, uh, what do you say? Um, that's what, uh, uh, signals and systems and signal processing and all those topics actually teach you. And that's why you can't do circuit design just by learning electronic circuits. Uh, in most electronic, in all uh, electronic programs, uh, along with electronic circuit design, you learn signals and systems and signal processing and all those. The reason why you learn that is because you need to know what you want to do with the signal, right? And then you need to pick up blocks to implement that as well. Okay. So hopefully you see how we uh, go about doing these designs. Now, what I have not done in this video is given you the circuit for a high pass filter, gain, summing amplifier, low pass filter, but I'm sure you can do that yourself, okay? Uh, and so that's how we get to making an ECG amplifier. Okay, hope that is uh, interesting. And if you have any questions, please uh, post below the video and I'll be very happy to answer. And uh, if you want a real challenge, why not build an ECG amplifier and uh, build it. And if you have a problem, just comment uh, below the video and I'll be happy to 
see it and help you out with making an ECG. If you have the circuit and you have problems uh, recording the ECG, I'm happy to help you with that as well. So take care. Uh, bye. And I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye.